Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Star Trek Panic. This is a game for 1 to 6 players, ages 13 and up, and the average playtime is about eh, 60 to 90 minutes, somewhere around there. There's no actual playtime listed on the box, but you can adjust the playtime by making the game easier or harder by choosing the number of missions you have to complete. But I'll get into that in a little bit later. Now, I do have the camera free at the moment, meaning that I'm holding it. I will put it up on the tripod in a little bit, but there's just a a lot of different components here, and my camera can only zoom out so far. So I wanted to just sort of show you all the different components, the box, and then I'll go ahead and mount the camera, and then show you a little bit about how the game is played. Here's the box insert for those of you curious. It does come with some baggies. You've got some tokens here. These are mission counters. Uh, down here on the uh, one side of the board, or one edge of the board, this is your completed missions tracker. As you complete missions, you'll be putting these numbers here, like one, two, three, and then they're even two-sided. So if you want to play more than five missions, which is the default, uh, to win the game you have to complete five missions, destroy all the remaining threats on the board, and uh, that's how you win the game. But if you want to play a longer game, you can flip these over six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's enough tokens to do that. You've also got these damage pieces over here. These ones are for shields. So you would slide these over shields like so. You've got uh, different uh, sections of the hall that can be damaged, like you've got these nacelles here that, that slide over top like so. I'm not going to do that now with one hand, obviously. I won't be able to do it. Um, but you get the idea. There's different uh, ship zones, and each of these hall parts can receive damage. But I'll get into that a little bit later again. Um, you've got a die here, and that is used to determine where enemies spawn uh, during that particular phase of the game. You've got a bag here full of uh, threat tokens, and I don't want to like dump this out uh, right now, but I do want to show you a few of them. You start off the game having to place a Tholian, uh, which has some special roles. I'll go over that in a little bit. You've got a uh, Klingon battle cruiser here. And you've got a Romulan battle cruiser. This is the starting setup, by the way. You're going to draw three of those ships and then put them on the uh, one, three, and five spaces randomly like that. The rest go into this bag. There are some special ones in here. Uh, for example, there's Kang's battle cruiser, uh, Koloth's battle cruiser, Kor's battle cruiser, Romulan birds of prey. Some ships actually cloak. Uh, meaning you flip them over and you cannot attack them. So there's a few different things going on in this game. You've also got some tokens over here, and I apologize for making you dizzy. I swear I'll get the tripod ready in a minute. But these tokens will come out depending on what missions are currently active at that point in time. Like, for example, and this is my favorite, the Doomsday Machine. Yes, the Doomsday Machine. You will be fighting the Doomsday Machine if that particular mission card comes up. That's pretty nasty. Uh, Space Amoebas. That's from Immunity Syndrome, the episode. Uh, this is an alien, um, even though it's not... Well, I guess that could be an alien. That was uh, from Star Trek One, the motion picture. Uh, force fields, you've got uh, is that an Orion Raiders. So these things will come out um, as needed. And then this one here, this is whenever the Tholian gets in close range or when the ship has taken so much damage that it can't maneuver. Yes, the ship can actually maneuver in this game, meaning it can rotate and can uh, quote-unquote move forward, which I'll get to in a minute. But in the case that it can't do that, uh, you'll simply slide this over top to remind you that you cannot maneuver at the Enterprise at that point in time. Whether it be through because of a Tholian web, or because it's taken too much damage, or because mission parameters tell you that you can't. Over here, uh, we've got the instruction manual. Uh, it's, it's pretty lengthy. It's about... Uh, 15, 16 pages, lots of special things. Uh, there is some assembly required here, for those of you curious. Uh, yes, I mean, everything sort of slides together like so. Uh, it took me a little bit to, a little finagling. You have to, like, bend these nacelles in the back here. You have to bend them up and slide this entire back part in. And that was the hardest part of the whole construction, which is uh, what you're looking at right here. That was, that was the hardest part to do. You have to uh, slide the nacelles and that back piece in. And, uh, yeah, just be careful not to bend the nacelles completely off. And, and yeah, that's bad. But anyway, um, getting to the rest of the components here. Uh, mission cards. This is what you need to complete in order to win the game. Uh, and again, you can play up to five, which is the default. You can play three, which is sort of like an easy mode, or two is as, as an easy mode. The, the uh, manual doesn't say what an easy mode technically could be. So you can you can decide for yourselves. Is two going to be enough? Is three going to be enough? Is five going to be enough? Is ten going to be enough? That's obviously harder. But uh, you've got um, 
you know, different ones like Mysterious Ship. A lot of these are named after uh, episodes of Star Trek themselves, like the Day of the Dove. You'll see a number three here. That is a time, uh, that's a timer that uh, goes hand in hand with this here. Basically, this blue chip token, whenever a uh, mission is drawn, you observe the uh, number here and you'll put the blue token on that number. And every turn, every player turn, this will count down to zero. And if the uh, token reaches zero before this mission is complete, then you have failed the mission and it goes back to the bottom of this deck. However, if you do complete the mission, there is a reward. Uh, for example, this one, return all Klingons on the board to the threat token bag. Any new Klingons drawn this turn are discarded instead of being added to the board. And then, you know, mission parameters, players may not target Klingon ships with any uh, Enterprise cards while this mission is in effect. Klingons still fire as normal. So, yeah, and what else is there? There's uh, the Deadly Years, again, uh, named after the one episode of Star Trek where everyone aged. Um, there's one generic one, Outpost Defense. There's uh, Search and Rescue, that's another generic one. Uh, the Changeling, that's with Nomad. Error. Error. The Immunity Syndrome. Then you've got, yeah, the Space Amoeba. Uh, for those of you Trekkers out there, uh, like me, you'll know uh, a, a lot, you know, there, you'll know a lot of these, uh, a lot of these cards. The Doomsday Machine, again, my favorite. So anyway, um, you know, you only do one mission at a time, and I'll go over the, the player turns in a minute. You've also got these uh, cards here, and this is the main deck. Players will get a hand of cards based on how many people are playing the game. Uh, for example, in a one to two player game, it's uh, six cards, I believe. But uh, you'll get some cards like this that allow you to fire phasers, and the orientation is important. So some cards allow you to fire out the sides. Um, other cards allow you to fire out the front. It basically, it basically determines your firing arc and how much damage it does and uh, stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, in order to complete missions, um, this is each card has a secondary effect. Not every card, but most cards do. On the very bottom, you'll see like a science or commit as science credit. To complete these missions, what you have to do, uh, let's see if I can find a better example. Uh, it's not it either. Some, car some cards don't require this, but these, one these ones, for example, Mission Objective. You must commit one Command Credit, two Science Credits, and two Medical Credits to complete the mission and cure the disease. So basically, these cards can be used to uh, be played on the board here to deal with threats by firing at them and doing so much damage, or they could just simply be placed next to the active uh, mission card you have out on the table. And in order to complete that, you have to players collectively has to have to put so many of these cards next to this. So this would count as a science credit. So that, that counts toward one of the two science credits needed to complete this. You would still need two medical credits and one command credit in order to complete that mission objective. So these cards can be used either or. Now you've also got some other cards in a deck like Dilithium, for example, repair one damaged shield or play with Tritanium to rebuild one destroyed hull or shield. So like in Castle Panic, you need those two cards to I think, a mortar and pestle or a brick and I don't know what it was, but you need it to play both cards in order to rebuild a wall is basically what it was. Similar to this. Um, you know, you've got some other cards here. Let me see if I can... There's like security teams in here uh, to deal with borders. Yes, there are borders. I'll explain that too. Uh, Hypo Spray. Search the discard pile for one security team and add it to your hand. Security teams are uh, useful for dealing with borders. Again, I'll get to that in a little bit later. Um, yeah, so there's a multitude of different cards here. I'm just going to leave a few out so we can uh, use them as an example. Now, you've also got some reference cards here. Uh, each player gets one of those. Uh, very handy for determining how a turn plays out. Then each player will get one of these cards here. They basically are uh, character cards, each with a special ability. James T. Kirk, for example, during the play cards and maneuver phase, the first time you commit a card to the mission each turn, uh, draw two Enterprise cards. So there's that. Then you've got Spock, Chekhov, Sulu, basically all the bridge crew here, uh, McCoy. Uh, so yeah, players can choose one character card to be, and then they can perform that uh, they can perform that action one time uh, on their turn. And that's basically all of the components that come with this. Um, you do have some walls that I did put down in here already. They just sort of slide in here. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and mount the camera onto the tripod, and we'll show you a typical turn. Okay, so I promise now you won't get dizzy anymore. Um, I'm not holding the camera. It's up on the tripod. So, uh, again, let's just quickly show you how a typical turn plays out. There are a lot of little rules, and I'll get to those after I explain the basics of a turn. Um, or as much as I can get to. I'm trying to keep the review moving. I may not catch everything, but it'll give you a good taste. But anyway, uh, the first thing that you do is draw up to your hand limit. Now, at the beginning of the game, everyone gets a certain amount of cards, so you can skip that particular step on your very first turn. Uh, the second one, reveal new missions if required. 
card. Again, on the very first turn of the game, there's going to be a mission already up, so you won't have to do that. If there's, uh, you know, later in the game, if there's a mission already up, you're going to skip that step. So basically, if a mission was just completed, then on the next player's turn, they'd go ahead and reveal one. And then uh, third, you can trade a card with somebody. So on your turn, let's say that you have a card that someone else needs, or they have a card that you need. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, you know trade a card back and forth and set yourself up and help set up your friends. Play cards and maneuver. So if three or more hull sections are destroyed, players may not maneuver. Maneuvering basically means that you can rotate the Enterprise. It starts off facing the one and the six. Uh, there's a little yellow arrow here. Well, not arrow, but it's the Starfleet insignia here. And there's a blue Starfleet insignia here. That's where everything starts. Um, so you're going you're gonna to face the Enterprise like that. But during uh, this particular phase, you can rotate it so that the firing arcs are a bit different. So now this is the rear facing arcs. These here are the, this is the side, and this is the side, and then these two would be the front. If I were to rotate it this way, you can only rotate it once, uh, by the way. But uh, now these two become the front, these become the side, and these the back. So you can rotate the Enterprise, uh, you know, just to sort of match the cards that you have and, and, and uh, make sure that you're in the proper firing arc to, to destroy these ships. Um, anyway, uh, after you maneuver, then you can uh, play cards. And, uh, for example, what you do, like in uh, Castle Panic, you're going to want to play cards that match, um, you know, the cards uh, that, you know, would be in the proper distance and range. So, for example, you've got, like, this one here. This card allows you to shoot uh, one target at long range and either side facing. Now, this is... Uh, a Romulan battle cruiser. Whenever you put threats out like this, you always put the highest number rotated toward the Enterprise. As it takes damage, it'll ro rotate like that. And then as after it gets down to the one and then gets hit again, it is destroyed, and that player keeps it as sort of like a, a victory token or whatever. But anyway, uh, in this case, this is a card that lets me hit someone out of my rear firing arc at long range. So I'm going to want to play that card to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Romulan battle cruiser for one damage. Unless it says otherwise, it all cards do one damage. I've got a hypro spray here. Search the discard pile for one security team and add it to your hand. Well, no discard pile is in existence yet, so I may use this as a credit toward this particular mission, the Deadly Ears. The Deadly Ears needs one command, uh, two of these uh, science, and two medical. Um, as a quick note, uh, this six here, uh, there's, uh, I know it's, I think it's off camera, so you probably can't see it, but, oh, here it is, okay. So here's the token. This should be on the six here, indicating that this is on the sixth turn, okay? And then, um, during this particular mission, the current mission time indicates the maximum number of cards the active pay player may play. So you're going to have to pay attention to this. Normally, at the end of your turn, you draw up to your maximum hand size, but this particular mission, as this mission ticks down, uh, you're going to have less and less cards to play. So this is a pretty nasty one if you don't complete it right away. But anyway, getting back to this, Hyper Spray. So I'm going to go ahead and assign one, uh, I'm going to assign that card to this uh, so that we can start the ball rolling on getting that one completed. I've got Dilithium, uh, repair one damage shield or play with uh, Tritanium to rebuild one destroyed hull or shield. Um, I don't need this as an engineering credit, so I may just hold on to this. Uh, long range rear phasers. Uh, well, it just so happens there's a Foley in here in the rear range firing arc, so I can play that. There's only one uh, damage on it, so uh, that it just gets destroyed, which is awesome. So that gets removed from the table. Uh, let's see, this is medium. Okay, now, as another thing that you could do is move forward. I forgot to mention the story in the maneuver part, but you can actually move the Enterprise forward. The model itself doesn't actually move, but anything in its front firing arc will move up one space. Uh, the rest of the tokens remain where they are. So let's just say that I hadn't shot anybody yet and I was still in the maneuver part. I could say I'm moving the Enterprise forward. That causes every token in the front to move up one space. And by me doing that, um, and then I start shooting people uh, with the cards that I just played. And then I can use this one, medium range, any facing phasers. This allows me to shoot at this Klingon battle cruiser here. And uh, I can do that, and that does one point of damage, so it goes down to two instead of three. Multi-range side phasers, uh, so I can shoot at any range using the side, so I can play this again and knock out this Romulan battle cruiser here. Okay, so that's good. And then that's it. Uh, I played all my cards. I managed to destroy two ships 
and uh, we're, we're all squared away. Now these ones that I did play go to the discard pile. The one I played to the mission card stays there until it's completed or until it fails one or the other. And then um, after that, you uh, check your mission status. Uh, threats move and fire. This is probably the most complicated part of the game. Unlike Castle Panic where, you know, ogres and trolls would just walk up and then once they were in close range, if they moved again, they hit your uh, wall and it did damage to it. Here, everything moves at once and fires simultaneously and does damage to you no matter what range they're at. So let's just say I hadn't destroyed, again, this is just for example purposes, um, I did destroy those other two ships, but let's say that this one was still here and that was there. Okay, so we've got a Romulan battle cruiser and a uh, Klingon battle cruiser still there. Uh, and where's that Tholian? I had him here somewhere. It just sort of just, oh, here it is. It's the, the Tholian's here. Okay, so let's say that, um, yeah, all of them were here. What they would do at this point is they would all move forward. One, two, three, like so, and then they would fire. Okay, no matter where they are, they're going to fire and do damage. So this one would do damage to this shield here. So I'd slide this little shield uh, damage indicator over it, and each, um, each shield can only take one hit. If it gets hit again, then it's removed. Okay, uh, this one's going to shoot and hit this one here, and this one is going to shoot and this, hit this one here. Um, even at close range, uh, these things like the uh, Klingon battle cruiser, they if the shield is still up, like let's say that it's here now, and on the next turn, uh, the ship were to move and fire, because it's already here, it doesn't actually move because it's still there's still a shield up. However, it will still fire. In the case that the shield wasn't here, that's where it becomes a border. And what I mean by border is uh, it basically hits the Enterprise. Uh, and then does damage based on its current defense value. So you've got a, a, a number two here. So it would do two damage, two hull damage to this part of the ship, and effectively destroying it. Again, each um, each hull section can only take two hits before it's destroyed. The first hit gets a uh, damage marker. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here's the damage marker, I believe. And then the other one is uh, the appropriate... Uh, Hall piece for it, just to show that it's been destroyed. Then you'll have to play certain cards to rebuild those uh, ship parts. But anyway, uh, that's how that works. Um, it, it takes some getting used to, because again, in the old Castle Panic, they just moved and moved and moved, and eventually they hit your wall and then they did damage. But here, all of them go at once. Now there are some rules uh, that different ships follow. For example, the Tholian. When the Tholian gets to your shields, uh, or the hull. They do not become borders once they are in short range like this. They stay there. However, uh, they'll put the Tholian web on you and then you won't be able to maneuver. So this thing will stay here until you destroy it. Okay, and then you can maneuver again. So there's that. Um, now security teams, that's one thing that ties in with those borders. Again, let's say the shield was not here and this thing moved forward and uh, did two damage. Now if I had a security team which is probably somewhere in the deck here, if I can find it. Here we go, security team. Play any time to reduce the damage from borders by one. Now, it doesn't matter whose turn it is. Other people can throw into this as, you, as, uh, as they would like to. So if I had a security team card and someone else had a security team card, they could play them, uh, you know, I could play it and they can play it, and that would reduce the damage to zero and no damage would be done. So players, all players can contribute to the security team part should any borders uh, make it through. But again, the shields have to be down in order for that to happen. If the shields are still up, it doesn't move, but it, it will still fire. And there are some other tokens in here that, um, you know, have special effects. Let's see if I can find a few. Uh, yeah, there's uh, one tokens with uh, blue borders, and that represents ships that can cloak. Cloaked ships uh, cannot fire. They start on the board face up like that. During the move phase, the move and shoot phase, they do uh, something different. Uh, if they are visible, they simply move forward and cloak, like so. And then after that, um, on, a, on a future turn, uh, if they are cloaked, what they'll do is uh, you'll roll a die to determine what direction it moves in. Like there's one, one and two moves clockwise, I think three and four, they stay where they are. Five and six is counterclockwise, something like that. Uh, but in this case, it's a five. So they would move uh, counterclockwise one arc, and then they would flip over and fire. Uh, and then that's that. The Romulan uh, Bird of Prey does, teal, does two damage whenever decloaking and firing. So that's like one of the special things that you have to face. But anyway, that's how cloak ships work. They still act as borders when they get into range and, and different things like that. A star base, uh, this is actually a friendly one. Uh, when st the star base will eventually 
um, you know, make its way, uh, well, yeah, it make its way to you or you move toward it. I don't remember the specifics behind it. Again, there's a lot of different things and I may get that wrong, but uh, you either have to maneuver toward it or it moves towards you. I'm not, I don't remember. But um, if you manage to get it within short range, uh, you can start repairing different parts of your ship or shields or whatever the case may be. And then the token is discarded. So this is actually a good one uh, to get. The Comet acts like the boulder in uh, Castle Panic. It'll sort of shoot from one side and then keep going, destroying ships as it goes until it hits a shield. Uh, so there's that. Uh, let's see if I can find. There's some special ones in here. Like this is a boss one. This is uh, Kang's Battle Cruiser. And again, they each have different effects, so I don't want to cover all of that. But uh, after that, uh, you draw two new threats from the bag. Now I've got threats all over the place here, but what you would do is you would roll a die for one, you draw one out, roll the die, put one on the one space, roll again, there's a five, then you put another one on the five space randomly from the bag. And then those are more threats that you have to deal with. So basically, the gist of the game is, uh, players are going to be collectively trying to complete these missions. As they complete the missions, they're going to be placing these uh, number tokens on the corner of the board over here. And then it's kind of hard to see because it's not, there we go. One. So yeah, let's say I'd completed the Deadly Years. I would put a one here and then draw a new mission card. Players are going to try and complete five missions, and then after that, no more threats come out, but they still have to clear out the board. If they manage to do that, they win the game. If not, well, they lose. So, uh, yeah. So that, that's basically the idea behind Star Trek Panic. Once again, I didn't cover everything, but that should give you a taste as to what you're in for should you decide to pick up this game. Again, there are character cards that you can get to give yourself special advantages throughout the game uh, and stuff like that. And cards can be seen by everyone, so you can plan out your uh, moves together and different things like that. Um, yeah, as far as what I thought... This is probably my favorite version of uh, Panic in general. I mean, I've got Castle Panic, I've got Dead Panic, I've got Munchkin Panic, uh, and now this is Star Trek Panic. I love Star Trek Panic, i got to say. Um, it improves upon the original theme so, so much. Uh, the missions, for example, uh, you know, these cards now are no, like this Dilithium, for example. Let's say your ship is not damaged. Now, but now you have a reason to actually use it um, in some instances. If, this, if there was a mission card out, that required a certain credit that I need, I could still play it, even though I can't use it right now, I could still play it on the mission card and try and complete it. And a lot of these uh, mission cards are really unique, like there's cons in here, the Doomsday Machine, like I was saying. Uh, so yeah, each, each one is a different threat that you have to deal with, special circumstances, um, and that really changed the nature of the game. Um, and of course, you've got, again, these cloaked ships that give you a run for your money. Being able to maneuver the Enterprise or moving it forward, you know, everything, allowing everything in front of you to move toward it. Um, yeah, and these tokens over here, again, as missions uh, call for them, you'll put them out like this disabled ship. That's one of the missions in the mission deck. It'll come out, see, right here or whatever, and then you have, to, you have to move the Enterprise forward in order to get to it and save the crew and then complete the mission that way. You don't need to spend any cards on credits or anything. It's just a matter of getting to that token. So, the Enterprise will be taking a lot of damage in this game, and the game is admittedly hard. At least, I thought it was. Uh, but there are ways around that, a number of ways around that, in fact. Uh, one uh, suggestion uh, that the rulebook does mention is that you can reduce the number of missions that you have to complete in order to win the game. So, if you want an easier game, try three. Uh, another way, and, and I don't mind doing this because I'm a casual gamer, even though I play a lot of games, I'm casual. Um, why not give everyone an extra uh, Enterprise card? That way, players have more cards and more options available to them. You could even uh, skip every other turn the, um, the draw threats phase. So, let's say that you've Instead of every turn new threats coming out, you can do it every other turn. Or, if you want to, each player can get, say, two character cards. If you only have, like, two players, for example, you can control two characters and use two special abilities as opposed to one. So there are a number of different ways that you can make the game easier. So, yeah, that, that's, I would really recommend trying out, like, an easy, like, tr try out the regular game first, and then if it's too hard for you or it frustrates you, go to the easier game, that way you can hone your skills a bit and then uh, get a little bit better at it. Because there is a lot going on. Again, you've got Tholians that'll slow you down and prevent you from moving. Um, you know, you've got ships coming in at you, all sides firing at the same time, you know, doing damage to multiple sections of the Enterprise, uh, and trying to rotate your ship to, you know, so that good shields are facing enemies and getting them within range of certain cards that you may have. It's, it's all very tactical. Um, and again, it can be frustrating to new players because it is a bit hard. But, like I said, if you played on an easier mode by uh, trying out any of those uh, suggestions that I just mentioned, 
um, I think you'll be in for a really, really fun time. So yeah, Star Trek Panic. Um, if you guys haven't already, uh, check out my official website. I do have a short review out there, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. And, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.